Hi there, everybody, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in ions of different isotopes. We're going to start by reviewing our definitions. Isotopes are atoms of the same element with the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons in the nucleus. And ions are positively or negatively charged atoms resulting from a loss or gain of electrons. So when we're looking at our subatomic particles, we need to remember that the number of protons is fixed for a particular element. If we vary the number of neutrons, then we're going to create different isotopes of that element. And if we vary the number of electrons, we're going to create different ions of that element. Let's have a look at this example of a potassium ion isotope to get started with. Using a periodic table or this infographic from Compound Interest, lots of information about this in the video description, we can determine that the number of protons for potassium, which is fixed, is 19. The mass number we've been given is 39. Using this number, we can determine the number of neutrons by doing the mass number minus the proton number, and it gives us a value of 20. If this was a neutral isotope of potassium, the number of protons would equal the number of electrons. However, we can see that our potassium isotope has got a positive charge. What that means is we have changed the number of electrons. A positive ion has lost electrons. A negative ion has gained electrons. And since it is a one plus charge in this case, that means we have lost one electron, allowing there to be more protons compared to electrons. So it's not that I've added a proton, it's that I've lost an electron because I can't change the proton number. As a result, the number of electrons in this ion of our potassium isotope is going to be just 18. Let's do a similar analysis now of this ion of an aluminium isotope. Using the periodic table, we know that aluminium has always got 13 protons. And using the mass number of 27, subtract from it this value of 13, we can determine the number of neutrons, which is 14 for this particular isotope of aluminium. But what about the number of electrons? Well, if it was neutral, it would be 13, but it's not, it's three plus and positive ions have lost electrons. And so that tells me my number of electrons in this case is just going to be 10. We can also do this for negative ions, like this oxygen two minus anion just here. The periodic table tells me that there are eight protons in this particular isotope of oxygen because it would be the same for all of them. Remember that number is fixed and the number of neutrons can be calculated in the same way as before as nine. The number of electrons this time, well, it's got a two minus charge and negative ions have gained electrons. And specifically here, we can see that it must have gained two. And so that means I've got 10 electrons on this particular ion of this oxygen isotope. Let's use this iodine anion as our final example. The number of protons is 53 because remember that's found on the periodic table and it's fixed. And the number of neutrons can be easily calculated by taking the isotope mass number of 128 and subtracting from it the number of protons, 53, and that gives us a very clear 75 neutrons in this particular isotope. The number of electrons, well, remember protons and electrons are equal to each other in neutral atoms, but this is a negative ion, and so therefore it's gained an electron, giving us 54 compared to 53 protons. It's really easy to practice this technique using lots of different ions of lots of different isotopes of the same element or different elements like the ones you can see here. 
Just be careful that you're not accidentally using a relative atomic mass value for the element instead of a mass number for your element. You could end up with a decimal value for your neutrons if you're not careful. You'll find lots of examples of this in textbooks and it's often very early in the exam papers in the form of a table, so keep an eye out for it in the practice papers. There's lots of links on screen now to take you to our other work on atomic structure, but until next time, Happy revising.